Welcome to Jackson Snyder Presents, a service of Vero Asin Yahad in cooperation with New Earth Restoration Network and the Asin Academy of Religion, Theology, and History. This broadcast is a Hebrew Nation radio original, serving the thinking believers of Enochian in Israel around the world. The Vero Asin Yahad is an ordaining ministry for men and women equally, and a covering ministry for upcoming Yahwist teachers and preachers, providing venues for new voices of faith and reason to be heard via the internet. If you would like to contact the Yahad, surf to yahad.me. That's yahad.me. Now let us together experience Jackson Snyder Presents. Hello, my friends. Uh, Bogdan here. Yes, I'm back. Give me a round of applause. <laughs> Tonight, uh, Thursday, October 12th, uh, 2023. We just have a couple people on here wanting to talk together about some biblical subjects. Really, uh, quite a few biblical uh, subjects. So let me introduce Sean and Vicky, and of course uh, Jackson Snyder, the one that this program is called after. You know, uh, Jackson Snyder present. Uh, I hope you do enjoy it, and I want you to know I only had to interrupt a couple times during uh, this recording, and I, I, I'm sure you will recognize this voice as Bogdan G. Shromkov, finally back from Odessa in Ukraine. Sometimes the show must go on, no matter how you feel. I am not feeling good tonight. It's been a busy day. I think the time of my walking has is coming to an end very quickly. I was thinking about maybe talking to Brother Emerson and, and you and seeing what you guys thought about starting up like a discipleship program for Haiti, like over Zoom or something with those that may be. Because I get, Finney sends me questions like uh, usually about every week. Me too. And he gathers up from all the people and in the email. I think he's comparing his our answers. What do you think about a discipleship program? Well, I was part of a discipleship program in Haiti for, well, I'm almost going to say many years. But we even had a compound down there where we brought in some various rotating Haitian teachers, and we had a couple that was the head of it that really did a good job running the compound and with, with the people and getting them to stick to their discipleship curriculum. And uh, yes, it's very effective. Sure, sure. I'd suggest that you'd either get a program, which you're probably going to have a difficulty finding considering his kind of questions, or making up a curriculum that includes also the way to walk, the halakha, maybe even the halakha that you find in the Clementines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I, I, why not? And my other question I wanted to ask you about is, Yahweh has put on my heart the cover the gospel a lot lately. What, what do you think about that? Do you think that one, do you think it's true? And two, do you think it has any like prophetic or any significance to the kingdom of Yahweh at all? Or curious um, uh, if you think that one, is it true? And two, I mean, I, it's pretty much proven to be true, but do you think it has any kind of like, what's the significance it could possibly have like for the future or for the kingdom? It's Who's that? No, no, no. The Kebra Nagas from oh. Solomon. The Queen Sheba going to Solomon. Kebra Nagash. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think it's significant. Yeah, Haile I, Selassie. Yes. Okay. Haile yeah. Selassie claimed, and maybe it's true, that he was an ancestor of Menelik, the Solomon's child. Oh, Brother Schneider, you don't mean ancestor. You mean descendant, right? Right. And I... When I first read that, I don't know, probably probably seven or eight years ago, I thought I got to read this out so other people can hear at least parts of it. I don't find anything that is more difficult to believe in that account than in the New Testament. Yeah. I think it's all believable. Of course, it's got to be fictionalized to some extent, or nobody would read it. Yeah. 
It's got to be fictionalized to some extent. But if this was a real advocate of Solomon, whoever's writing this, he wouldn't have put the rape story in there. No, no. And some of the other things he says are, are not really praiseworthy of Solomon. Yeah. Well, Solomon fell victim to the class eight. He he got it backwards. He started well and ended badly. It's more important to end to start badly and end well. <laughs> the testimony from scripture is what a thousand so many wives and concubines. So it's definitely to me it's it wrong was the first because I watched the video we have on the YouTube channel. You did, I think it's a two part series you did. You read it. Yeah. And that put me on my heels. I had to go find it and then actually read it myself. And it was it just it, it has always struck me as true. And I just thought it was... Yeah, I think it is true. Yeah. Solomon, obviously, was plagued with early onset Alzheimer's disease or some other kind of dementia, coupled with the fact that he was a sex fiend. Yeah. And the surprising thing I think he brings out there, the author, is that Solomon only had two children or two sons. Out of all those women, insofar as we know, there's only two of them. And Rehoboam, of course, was a mess. Rehoboam, undoubtedly, like Solomon, spoiled to death. And Menelik, the story, as the story goes, was to be the successor to Solomon there in Jerusalem. But his mother sent him there on something like a pilgrimage, and he looked just like Solomon except he was darker skin, and he refused. He said, I got my own kingdom to rule, empire to rule. I would like to get a hold of some of the other books in Gaez, but quite a few of them have not been translated yet. There's a nice oh, job for you to do, learn Gaez. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'll put that on my list. <laughs> Kebra Nagash, what a story. Thanks, brother. That's great. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That's a great question. I... Uh, I think maybe that might be a great book to study on Sundays as well. Oh, I do too. I love, you know, I love that, that, that book and the, um, uh, the tower drawn a blank now. <laughs> What about the tower at, at, at the end in, in the Sinaiticus there? Uh, oh, the Shepherd of Hermas. Mm -hmm. Those two writings just really touched me when I read them. Oh, my friends, if you're interested in that story, and the rest of the stories of the Queen of Sheba and her son Menelik, who was to be the successor to Solomon, go out to our place, www.youtube1.org, and look up Kebra, K-E-B-R-A, Nagash, N-A-G-A, and I'm really not sure what those last couple of letters are, but that will get you there and find you that two-part series, which is a reading right from that ancient book that I believe was written in the Gaez language, same as Book of Enoch. And if you can't find it, uh, give me a call. 321-555-1212. Neither one of them got into the canon, obviously. But, uh, you know, there... There's another book here. It's not an ancient book. If you, if you want ancient books, go online. There's gobs of them that have been translated. But uh, one having to do with this man. Oh, I don't want to go over here to my library. The book is for sale. You know, I sell books, used books. And this one has to do with his, let me see, his exploration of Ethiopia looking for the Ark, the Ark, the Ark of, of the, the Covenant. covenant. Yeah. This takes me a little longer. Looking for the Ark of the Covenant. This guy went so deep into the jungles and found so many things and found so many of their folky spiritualist things to be true and so many places and claims that he found the throne of Solomon and the replacement Ark of the Covenant. He says, this isn't the first one, this is the replacement. And so it gives us a more of an idea that maybe the Ark of the Covenant ended up there. It's always been a suspicion. However, this guy... Vicky says Graham Hancock. No. Is it Graham Hancock? No. Sean, if you go to his eBay, he's got oh. a store in there called Kingdom Cart, Cart with the K. Yeah, Jackson does? Jackson. It's a nice store. Oh, I didn't know that. I'll have to, I'll have to go check it out. 
He's got like 150 gazillion pages of books for sale. I've got quite a few of them, but I've got more books to put online. I try to put on a few every day. Used books, I buy them or I find them, and I got to sell them. That's part of my income. If I don't, then, and if I fall short, I got no place to go except the Sean's live in his house trailer. That's the only place I, I've been invited to. So I got well, to. If you could get up my steps, you could always stay. I got a sleeping bag for you. Uh, yes, of course, we have had a religious bookstore out there on eBay for a long, long time, many years, where we go traipsing around to thrift stores, sales, giveaways, plus Brother Snyder, he's always buying books, and when we get done reading those books, then we put them up for sale. So we have about 250 books on there right now, and probably a thousand more here at the office lined up in boxes against the wall that we are hoping to put up there sometime soon. Brother Snyder usually puts a couple on, and then I'll put a couple on every single day. The same books that he buys and resells for practically nothing. What hinders us these days is the price of postage. Even the smallest book, you'll have to put out $4 for postage. How do you make money with that? Well, little by little, I guess. And that is a kingdom cart, cart with a K, dot com. Or give me a ring if you can't find it. 666-555-2549. Mikasa Sukasa. We'll even get you hooked up with a cool Harley scooter so you don't got to walk around. Oh, that would be great. I'm looking for one right now. My days of walking are almost finished. Do I didn't do anything because of uh, Feast of Tabernacles this year. Nobody else really wanted to do anything. And I just, I can't handle it anymore. It's just too hard. And yeah. tonight's a hard night for me, dizzy all day. And well, anyway, the guy went through every mud hole, every cave, every danger even danger from pygmies and cannibals to find this thing. And the book is just not exploration, but it's very interesting also on account of his uh, intercourse, like conversation, I'm not talking about sexual intercourse, his intercourse with the natives there, with all the rumors about the Ark of the Covenant being there, and uh, different old, old people running libraries and museums and such that had s secret stories about it. Anyway. Yeah, I'll, I'll go on your eBay tonight. I didn't realize you had one. I'll, I'll I'll pick up. There's a couple books I'm looking for. I'm sure I'll probably find them there. So, Well, I don't have that many, really. I've probably got a thousand out there, but I've got a lot more here. Here it is. Let me show it to you. For the amazing price of $5. That is right in my yeah. price range. That's what I do. This is wrapped in vinyl. It was a former library book. It's got color plates and maps, and it's in excellent condition now. And it's an excellent book. See, who's the author here? I could not remember the author's name, and you wouldn't be able to either. Tudor Parfit. He's an English explorer, archaeologist. So there, there's one right there. I, I would suggest that book. Graham Hancock's book uh, is a little too industrial, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'll go on and get this tonight, then. I'll browse your stuff. Well, I just bought a new bookcase. I bought an additional bookcase because my I'm starting to add stacks of books on my desk, which which I don't like. I like to have my desk cleared out so that I, I have to get another bookcase that's oh, bigger. That's so. stuff that you don't want. Let me know. I'll put it online and I'll sell it either for me or for you. Look at this. You'll be interested in this. Yeah, I have. I've read that book. Actually, I have it on my Kindle. Really? Paul on yep. trial? Mm -hmm. I have a lot of anti-Paul books written. <laughs> I probably have five or six of them I've read by different people that were trying to show he was a false apostle. Yeah, I, I've got one by Gerd Luneman, Luneman called Opposition to Paul. Yeah. And he says, well, there wasn't really much. You know, when you get down to the end of it, he quotes all these different tracts and books that are still around. What would interest me are the books that are not around. This has been my interest, Apocrypha, oh, for a long time. And yours too. And yours too, Vicky. I just can't understand how the Christian church and the Jewish church can limit the canon for people to read. It's all power. It's power. It is power. Keep our I absolutely power. agree with you. You as the knowledge has the power. Right. Knowledge is power. 
Do you want to just talk tonight, or do you want me to do something? Let's just talk. All right. Yeah, if, if, if you've had a, a long day, brother, let's just chill out. Talk, talk, talk. You always tell me you like to talk, Vicky, and now I don't have anything to say. Yeah. Well, this Isaiah chapters 18 and 19 are astounding. And I don't know whether it's we've talked about this before, or you have, certainly the Abrahamic Path Initiative. Have we talked about mm-hmm. that before? Briefly, we talked about it a few months ago. I think one of us had mentioned it, but we didn't talk about it in detail. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. I'll show you something, and then you can talk about it. Talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. And this is Avram's pathway, starting at Ur of Chalde. Now, you know what that means in an ancient language, Akkadian? It means I don't. Ur means source, mm-hmm. and Chalde means demons. Ur of <sighs> Chal- Chaldees, that is speaking of the source of demons. Well, that makes Wonder sense. Why you told them to get out of there. Well, yeah. uh, must have been a Hebrew that named it. I guess it's not yeah. far, you can see, from Eden. Yahweh told him to get away from his father's idols. Mm-hmm. And you remember the story about the youth and his way of destroying those idols? I know what you're talking about, but I don't remember right off the top of my head how he did it. Isn't that the one where it is? No, that might be thinking of another one. But who's the one where they put the dust on the, on the ground and they found the footprints in them? Was that Abraham or was that somebody else? I don't know. I've got a video up about that, looking for it. It's only about a minute the- long. Oh, no, you know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of Bell and the Dragon is what I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm. You should play that Bell video. Bell and the Dragon. Look where it goes. It follows up the river to Haran, mm-hmm. which is named after Avraham's uncle, right? Up through Turkey, Aleppo, where the Aleppo Codex was for many years until looters got in and got most of it. We got some of it back. Very old Hebrew tech. Here's the Antioch that they think was the headquarters for Paul and Barnabas. They think, and by golly, is that in Syria or is that in Lebanon? I will never know from this map, although this is called Lebanon Mountain Trail. And it's I think that's modern day Lebanon, actually. Is it? Looks like it. Here we're in Syria with Dam- Damascus, the bloody cup, Madaba, the place of the famous Madaba map, Petra. Not, they're not there yet. You know, there's been so much fighting there f- with everybody. I'm surprised that they're doing anything right now with that. The stone city, Petra. Petra, you know, is feminine, means stone or rock. Brings us down here to the desert, Beersheba. And this area here is what the area that Menachem Begin gave up to Egypt. It was good that he did, too, because it serves as a buffer zone. And down to Mecca. We've got Mount Sinai over here. Some say today that Mount Sinai was actually in Africa. Not bad. I actually did a six-month tour of duty in the Sinai Peninsula, part of a group called the Multinational Force and Observers. We were there to to enforce the peace treaty between Israel and Egypt, actually. Wow, tell and me. And I actually got, I actually climbed that mountain that they said is Mount Sinai, and St. Catherine's Monastery was there and all that. Yeah, I've been up there. Not all. Wow, what a place. Yeah, you that's really like it. That's where the Codex Sinaiticus was found, up yep. on the top mountain there in Catherine's Monastery. Okay, tell us more about that tour of duty. We had um, we had a bunch of observation posts set up all throughout the Sinai, and uh, we would rotate out to sector, and uh, we would have a squad that would go out and occupy. It was a fenced-in, wired-in place. We had mines in place, um, and they were checkpoints, and they were on the main travel fares through the Sinai Desert, and uh, we would have to do, you know, car checks, or if there would be anybody out. Uh, raising a ruckus, you know, like probing the wires or anything. We'd have to go out and put do patrols and things like that. But it was basic. But we were there actually to enforce the peace treaty between Israel and Egypt. And uh, it, it was a pretty peaceful tour of duty for the six months we were there. But I got an opportunity to go to that to the Mount Sinai there, St. Catharines. I uh, went up into Egypt into Tel Aviv and. And um, unfortunately, at that time in my life, it was during the early nine. Uh, we'll see, MFO was yeah, early nineties, 
Um, I was a hardcore infantry guy. I was a drinker, a partier, so I didn't really, I didn't know Yahweh and I didn't know of any. So basically it was a big wasted opportunity <laughs> because had I gone there now, you know, or if I would have been a believer, that would have been a, a six months. I mean, because I would go out for sector for 10 days and we'd come back and we'd have a week off and you can do whatever you wanted within that week. And back then, it was before any of this nonsense going on. We were free to travel up to, up in Israel. We could have, I could have went to all the different Holy Land places. And there was some of my fellow soldiers that were believers had actually gone and then, you know, saw Jerusalem and went to all the holy sites. You know, and, and I could have, but I was more, I partied. I, we went up to Tel Aviv and partied at the nightclubs and things. And <clears throat> it's just it's just a, a bit of regret I have to this day because, you know, had things been a little bit different, I could have. Who knows what would have happened? But yeah, so it was it was it was pretty cool. I, to me, uh, I mean, I have pictures of me on the on Mount Sinai. I'll, I'll post pictures on, but you know, it just there's no way that that was Mount Sinai. There's just no way it it, it doesn't fit the biblical description. Yeah, it's just a big tourist trap, really. But nonetheless, uh, it was interesting. It was. Fun is it surrounded it by fencing and soldiers guarding it? No, that's in Jabal Allah's. That's in Saudi Arabia. The, the one in St. Catherine's, it's a tourist trap. I mean, they have like camel rides that take you up it. And, you know, like, it's like, dude, there's no way they would allow. I mean, come on. This is Mount, This is where, you know, the Torah was given. And if they have like camels, you can ride them all the way to the top and take selfies here. And it's just, it's just so, you just know that it's not. I mean, I knew it wasn't the real Mount Sinai back then, and I wasn't even a believer. Right. You know, well, the uh, one in Jabal Allah's is the one that's that's secured. And how far away is that from the tourist Sinai? Um, it's across the Gulf of Aqaba yeah. in Saudi Arabia. Probably, I, I don't even know, but I tell you what, we were at Sharm El Sheikh is where our outpost, the South Camp, was, is right outside of Sharm El Sheikh, right on the Red Sea. There I actually have pictures underwater pictures of me uh snorkeling underneath the red sea and taking pictures and stuff of the coral and things but anyway right what i didn't know then but i know now is that if i were to take in a 20 mile or 30 mile drive straight up the coast i could have actually went and saw the pillar that they put at the at the port where the nation of israel crossed the red sea and they found the underwater land bridge now and all that i could have literally went and saw that <laughs> but you know didn't do it didn't know and just didn't do it how did you get in the armed forces anyway? Did they I tell graduated. you that if you if you would sign up, you could get out of prison? No, I was I graduated high school in eighty five, May of eighty five, and uh, <laughs> I had a a road to madness for about a year. I was I was a horrible whoremonger. I was heavily into drugs, and my father he he, he gave me a year to see what I was going to do with my life, and we saw that I made just one bad decision after another. He came home because he was in the Air Force. He's a retired Air Force guy. He came home from work one day and I could, he sat me down. He said, okay, you have four choices. He said, Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marines. <laughs> really? So I went and took the ass back and joined the Army. <laughs> He saved me, honestly. My dad, my dad, he he basically saved my life because otherwise I would have. Yeah, it was no good. He knew it, so yeah, we had a plan. There was no draft at that time, I guess. No, no, that was after the draft. Yeah, when I was at that age, there was a draft for Vietnam, and I signed up as a conscientious objector and went to Canada. Just I couldn't go there. I'd be one of those second seven second recruits yeah. that lived there seven seconds in the jungle. Yeah. But anyway, let me show you Isaiah 18. Wow, that's a great story. There's so many things you wish you had done, right, Vicki? So many things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is so, so true. I just love this chapter. Ah, land of whirring wings, whirring wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. That means west out to the west the land of whirring wings sends ambassadors by the nile in vessels a papyrus upon the waters gives us a little hint i wrote this all to music go you swift messengers go to a nation tall and smooth to a people feared near and far a nation mighty and conquering whose land the rivers divide this is a really good description of of modern day america and what it put me in mind of uh, as far as the tall and the smooth at that time nobody was smooth and nobody was very tall 
I think we're one of the tallest nations. I mean, the nations with the tallest people in it. And by and large, at least when I was thinking of this, not many people wore beards. Jackson has not of relent. We'll be right back after the following important messages. Well, we're back trailing the clouds of glory. I think that's what it means with the smooth business. People feared. Of course they fear us. Mighty and conquering. The land the rivers divide. Now think of the Mississippi River. It goes right across in the middle of the country. And when was it? In 88? You guys will remember this. There were the tall in Ethiopia. They're called Falasha, although that's not a right name. These were Jews. Since then, it's been proven that these black Africans, very tall, have the blood of early Judaism. Beautiful people. And Bush, Bush one, sends 747s or 777s down there and takes these people out right before they were going to be massacred and flies them to Israel. They make Aliyah. And what a story. So if this has anything to do, this prophecy has anything to do with our lifetimes, that would have to be it. Bush, number one, yeah, he might have been in the Bilderbergs or in the Skull Club or whatever, but he did some significant things. And this is one of them. Well, Yahweh spoke through an ass. <laughs> he can do what he likes, right? With whom he likes. Yeah, I was referring to Jackson about that about the genetically proven. I was talking. I was agreeing with what you were talking about with the the tall, smooth that have been proven to be Jews. Yeah, they've proven they've pretty much. If you look at a map of Africa from like 1754 or before, you can see there's a land mass there that's called the land of the Negroes, mm. and it was for mm -hmm obviously black people and there's if you look at the bottom of that map right at the, at the bottom of the land of the negroes it says judah the kingdom of judah, judah. Mm -hmm. the royal house of judah uh went there they migrated there and and that and there's a lot of truth to the american african-american people claiming to be from the tribe of judah because they were sold by their own kind by their own other jewish people into slavery the royal house of judah doesn't it seem like that's the way Yahweh gets people around? Absolutely. And and you know what? It's been genetically proven. John Hopkins <laughs> genetically proved it in 2001 or two, I think. It's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. At that time, gifts will be brought to Yahweh Savayot from a people tall and smooth, from a people feared near and far, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the rivers divide, to Mount Zion, the place of the name of of Yahweh Sarios. Now look at this. You probably already know this, but this shows us that the text was written in verse. You know that, right? Let me see. No, I did not know that. No. Okay. This it wasn't. It's prose. But these could be sung. They generally rhyme in Hebrew. They have a particular rhythm that can't be demonstrated in a book. So uh, you know that now, and you can understand then that these ancients wrote in verse, especially in the Psalms and many of the, in the prophets as well. There isn't just one song, the song of Deborah or the song of Moses. There are lots of songs that inspired me. And the land of whirring wings, swift messengers, go to a nation tall and smooth, to a people feared near and far. I'm thinking that probably this too here is not in the original text. There are a lot of languages that don't have, what is that, a conjunction? No, that is, a, it starts with P. I don't deal with that too much. What is it's a pronoun, isn't it? A, a preposition. Part, part, uh, preposition. Preposition. Thank you. You're welcome. Look, when the trumpet's born, blown, here, for before the harvest, when the blossom is over and the flower becomes a ripened grape, he will cut off the shoots with pruning hooks. What does that shoot stand for? Leaders and the spreading branches he will hew away. Okay, down in verse 19, something I really like here, and then I'll shut up. 
Yahweh is riding on a swift cloud and comes to Egypt, an oracle concerning Egypt. And the idols of Egypt will tremble at his presence. Nobody worships idols there anymore. They venerate idols, but they don't worship. And the heart of the Egyptians will melt within them. You know, that's the home of the Coptic Christians, always under so much persecution by those Muslims there, always being massacred, their assemblies, their churches always being set on fire. This is a people group that we have just forgotten. We are believers. I worked with them. It's probably 25 years ago or so. It came to my knowledge, you know, it was right before, well, that's 25 years ago, right before 9-11. Spirit within them will be emptied out. Is that demonic spirit? And I'll confound their plans, and they will consult the idols and sorcerers and the mediums and the wizards. And I will give over the Egyptians into the hand of a hard master. Oh, that's a fact. A fierce king will rule over them, primarily the devil, says Adonai, Yahweh Saviot. I want to get down here to the end again. In chapter 10 through 19, so much stuff down here. Yeah. In that day, the Egyptians will be like women and tremble with fear before the hand that Yahweh Saviot shakes over them. I think anybody would tremble with fear. And the land of Yehuda will become a terror to the Egyptians. Obviously, that's true. Everyone to whom it is mentioned will fear because of the purpose that Yahweh Savio has purposed against them. And this is lovely. This ending is lovely. In that day, there will be five cities in the land of Egypt that speak the language of Canaan and swear allegiance to Yahweh Savio. One of these will be called City of the Sun. That's a correct translation. In a lot of translations, they put here a gloss from uh, the Masoretes. They put their city of destruction. Check it and see. 1918. The City of the Sun. They took about five cities here, and there was a time when there were five temples of Yahweh there, and one was in the city of the sun, which didn't exist at this time. Heliopolis, a part or suburb of what's called Cairo today. One of these would be called Heliopolis. That's a city. Where else were they? In Yeb, the island of Elephantine Island was populated with Jews, and they had a temple there that was supposedly just like the temple in Israel. Let me say another thing about this Heliopolis. I, I suppose you know the story of the Onion Temple, when the Zadokites got thrown out of Israel? Yeah. Okay. That, that, that's actually right in that that temple is actually in the promised land. I thought I thought that was interesting. It's right on the edge of it, but it's still in it. I thought that was interesting. Mm. Wow. And so we've got that. We've got Yeb Island. Um, my mind is not working good tonight. Uh, the great temple of, uh, what? what's the, they call him the, uh, I'm having a breakdown here. Who's the best known pharaoh? Talking about Ramses? After Ramses. Tutankhamun. The one that's no. his father, King Tut. Akinamon. Ah, now you see, I I'm being addled. I'm addled. Akhenaten in Akhenaten. Yes. And you know, take a look at Ezekiel's temple. Is literally exactly like what was there at Akhenaten, and I have no doubt that Akhenaten and his father and his grandfather and maybe his great grandfather were Hebraic believers. Well, that's a whole nother subject that I need to be stronger before we can go into that. So uh, it'll be a sign and witness to Yahweh of hosts in the land of Egypt. When they cry to Yahweh because of oppressors, he will send them a savior and will defend and deliver them. And that happened. And Yahweh will make himself known to the Egyptians. Now, this doesn't mean every Egyptian that ever lived. One temple there in Heliopolis, a huge city, the City of the Sun, certainly claimed a lot of Egyptians, and that Onion Temple lasted for 250 years. 
they'll know Yahweh in that day. And they did this very thing, sacrifices and burnt offerings. Uh, That other place I was thinking of was Amarna. In that day, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian will come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians will worship with the Assyrians. This Abraham Path Initiative, the first time I really read this with uh, spiritual eyes, very soon after that, I heard a radio show about that on NPR. It was entirely secular, and the main ones who bought into this were the UN and Harvard Harvard University. Both of those are extremely secular and, to some extent, evil. And I thought, this is exactly what it's talking about here. That was in 2007. In that day, Israel will be the third with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the earth. Has that day come yet? Oh, maybe to some small extent. Whom Yahweh Saviot has blessed, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my heritage. So we've already seen the five cities of temples there. What will happen next? When is this going to come to pass? Is it through the Abraham Path Initiative? All right, I'm done. Y'all Thank you, Chuck. Talk- that was awesome as usual. Was it really? Yeah, it was. It's, I, I always, I like to dig in your mind. You you have so much to talk. I mean, so much stuff you say, <laughs> stuff I don't know, details, and they plug right into what I'm thinking, and it's just awesome, actually. <laughs> Yeah, I keep talking about that. No, I'm like a walking encyclopedia. A one-trick pony is more like it. Well, I know, you know, I think all the information that you have in your spirit and in your mind, it's okay for you to forget once in a while. You've got a lot of stuff up in there, brother. Me forget Akhenaten, Akhetaten? <laughs> you know, we did a whole year of study in the Yahad. You Dye. forgot Hezbollah the other night. Hezbollah. You couldn't think of it. No, I can't. That's a great study you guys did, Jackson. I've watched that series a few times, actually. Oh, with that's a lot. Yep. I like her. I think she's a good speaker. I like her. You know what happened to her? No. She couldn't speak a word in public. Wow. We just kept encouraging her and encouraging her and encouraging her. And uh, a couple of years ago, she left the Ahad and went into Orthodox Judaism. I'm just waiting for her to come out again. When she came to us, she had been in a sect of Christianity called uh, the Millennial Dawn Movement, in which, and her parents too, she'd never been to a church. She knew nothing about church because all the church they had was a Bible study once a week. I got really interested in that movement. It's called the Dawn Bible Students. Now, Bible Students. There are some great things about the Bible Students, actually. But uh, she had no reference. She believed in Messiah just from that kind of upbringing, very little religious training. And she just became voluminous in a short time, maybe five years, and then went back into Orthodox Judaism because she found out that one of her ancestors was Jewish. That's what a shame that is. That is heart-wrenchingly bad. It was for me because uh, we worked together a lot. We went to feast together. We went to everything that we provided, sometimes five or six events a year at that time. And she's the one that always set up the feast and events. She knew how to do that well. That's a that's a dangerous position to be in to understand. Well, like just like it says in Hebrews, you know, if you understand. Yeah, Messiah, and you have a relationship, but then you you deny him and walk away from him. That's a that's a horrifying place to be. I'm not. I, I'm going to pray for her. I didn't know that, brother. But her her videos that you guys did, mm-hmm. good stuff, amazing. I I really and actually I watched a video series recently, but I can't remember the guy's name now. But um, he about the Egyptian timeline and stuff and things he found out, and he came to a lot of those exact same conclusions that I had already learned actually through watching that video series at the, on our, the YouTube channel. It was amazing. La- last thing I wanted to say, Jackson, is brother, I am very excited for you. Not for this Shabbat, but for the second Shabbat. The message I have for the second Shabbat, I think of all the people that are going to hear it. I pray anyway. 
Yahweh willing, I think you are going to enjoy it most of all. I, I can't I, wait. I, I can't truly wait. believe that, brother. I think you're going to enjoy it most of all. I have been looking forward to this ever since we set it up. Hey, you might start a revival. You might be there a year or two. I pray Amen. I, I pray I am. That would be Amen. great, great. And as long as you're I agree. Putting something in your hair, I think you you can succeed. Yeah, see, it looks nice. Well, you, you know what I did my hair today is because my wife was supposed to get off work and we were going to go out to dinner. So I had to get out of my pajamas and get my clothes on and get presentable. And then she ended up, her headache jumped up. She's having oh. a real stressful time at work, but she ended up getting a headache so we couldn't go. So I was kind of all dressed up with nowhere to go. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, Vicky, don't you think he's Yes, happy? sir. Yes, Jackson. Isn't Sean handsome tonight? He's very handsome, but he's not as handsome as you are. <laughs> oh, well, the old guy's still got something going for him at any rate. You have the most, your eyes smile when you smile. Have you they ever twinkle, noticed? They twinkle with light. I they do. One... I, I'm not just, I'm not blowing smoke. I really mean that. I'm one of these people. Look, I smile. No teeth. No teeth. You don't have teeth? No. What? No, I'm saying you don't see teeth. How many well, people you find like that? Uh, well, two brothers, the same thing. When they smile, I live, you, I live around. I live around a lot of people that don't have teeth. So you look around and see. Uh, is it a birth defect, or is this the way it's really supposed to be? No teeth. All right. I never but, noticed that, but now that now that you've pointed it out, I will forever notice. Okay. Good. See. What a great influence we are on her, Sean. Y'all really are. Y'all just have no, you just cannot even know how much I love you guys and how much I have learned from y'all. I could just never thank you. There's not enough. I could never express it. Maybe the time will come that we can get together for a feast. I, I would really love to do that. We should do I that. We really should do that. We should do it next year because we may not have a chance after that, the way the world's going, you know? That's right. Well, if you ever think you wanted to go to Florida, we can make a way. I mean, it's warm here in January. In fact, it's better in January than it is in July. Way better. Yeah. Spoke yeah. with my wife last week, Jackson, and I told her that I have a really strong burden. I wanted to come down and see you face to face. And I, I, I wouldn't burden you guys by saying like I would get like a hotel or something just, just for a few days. But um, I think I told you a couple of years ago that I really strongly, I would really love for you to lay hands on me. I, I, I just would really like, I've, I've always, it's always been put on my heart. Yeah, and I would like to pleasure. see you, brother, because we've been talking about it for so long. And so I, I ran up by my wife and my wife's like, go. She goes, drive your truck or, because I don't really like to fly. Like I fly and just, no. I've flown a lot in my life, but I I just don't like to. But but I but I would to go down there to, you know, to see. I, I the trip's would. enjoyable. Yeah. Maybe we can get together next year in Knoxville. I'm going to go there. But Knoxville, that's an hour south of me. Yeah, I know. Why didn't I see you last? Because you didn't. Because in, you didn't invite me. You said you were going to invite. You said you did. did you said that. You. you said I might. I might invite you. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Vicky, and then you didn't. <laughs> and I never invite myself. So. Vicky, if you yes, come Jackson. to Florida, don't worry about money. Oh. We've seen miracles here when people want to step out for money. Don't worry about it. Just make your plans. I need some miracle money, man. <laughs> yeah, we all That's do. what it would take to travel all the way to Florida. Here are beaches on the Atlantic coast. Yes, about a little south of halfway. How far is it from Jacksonville? Oh, about 120 miles. Well, that's not too bad. I have a neat. I have a niece that lives in Jackson. Okay. I, I was going to visit you, Jackson, not not like for a feast. I was just going to coordinate a time when you were feeling good, good and like had a few extra days just to hang out, just to hang out and yeah. fellowship. And Well, I feel good enough for that. I just, when I have to walk around, I, I get very weak and now I need to take naps. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not sightseeing. Sitting around, there's lots to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's my goal is just to be to hang out with you. I don't need to go see anything. Yeah. There's nothing in Florida I need to see. So let's hang out. All right. Well, I will. I will talk to you about it in the days to come, and maybe we can figure out a time frame that would be conducive to you, and I'll just okay. show up. And in the meantime, 
time's up for our little talk time, and you did a great job, both of you. you Let's get, get together next Tuesday again. I don't know what they're doing on Sunday yet. I mean, for we had a great study there the last six or eight months in Barnabas. I'm interested to see what they're throwing around, the books they're throwing around to do it again. Either one of you would be a great facilitator or teacher of one of those studies, ongoing studies. So I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, Jackson. You have been listening to Jackson Snyder Presents on Hebrew Nation Radio. Snyder Presents is sponsored by Vero Asenia Yahad, a biblical literature think tank headquartered in Vero Beach, Florida. Vero Yahad provides new translations, online seminars, rare books and research work connected with the Zadokite movement, the Dead Sea Scrolls, and the New Testament. Free lectures, lecture recordings, and literature are posted at www.veroyahad.org. That's V-E-R-O-Y-A-H-A-D dot org. Contact me, your host, Jackson Snyder, by email at veroyahad at gmail dot com or catch us all on Facebook. Shall reign and the earth shall respond.
upon the heavens proclaim his righteous theme. Mountains melt and trembling shakes the earth, so millions may witness his esteem. Great, 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 great is Yahweh. Great, 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 great up on Zion's hill. 